Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about this kitty. Hi everyone. This past day I've been take care of the new kitty. I haven't give her a name yet. She's super cute. What we are actually going to talk about is this effect. It could be looking something like this. Kind of like a like a water liquid form. Also, it could be something looking like this, more like a magical or space kind of look. Using this technique. You can make a lot of things that is like uh, totally different than the other. Once you learn it, you can try to make something by your own. Get this idea by watching this video from Bradley Animation that I have mentioned his channel before. His tutorial is awesome and his effect looking really nice. And in his video, mostly he used his custom bell note group so i want to make a video it's kind of similar to this effect but some part is using different method thing is easier so i want to share this i will post this file in my patreon everyone that is joined can get this file and let's jump in to make this cool fossil fill effect first we create the icosphere create a geometry node just name that to be anything you like then we use a sphere to replace the echo sphere because we need to have more subdivision. That's our sphere for the photo field. And then we, we need another sphere to interact with it. So create another sphere, just make it like a little bit smaller and put it aside next to it. Okay, so we, we have to drop that in there. So you just pin pin that and when you click here you will not change to that so it's easier so just um, drop that echo sphere in and we have to use this echo sphere to delete some of the face but instead of delete now that I prefer to use separate geometry because it got this invert maybe I can do something with the the invert could be more interesting so now we have to make a selection calculate the distance between these two to be a selection for this separate geometry we have to use this geometry proximity this will calculate the distance between two objects this icosphere will be the target geometry and then whatever we plug this with will be the source geometry so now we have to use the distance to compare so now you will see this kind of holes but it's not what we want because we forget to change this to be relative you see this sphere as in the center so once we change that we have to change this to be bigger Okay, this number to be something like 0.2. And now you see, whenever it's close, it will delete the face or it will separate the face like this. Right? So now we want to use this selection, not the invert. Now we might want to have more face to make it more smoother. And even we can use some modifier. We use smooth and take the number to be you know somewhere higher. Whenever you see the edge look smooth. So now we got something like this. We got basically what we want, but now we want to make it more detailed. So we would use a noise texture to mix with this distance. So noise texture and uh, multiply and add to mix this together. Set the add to be zero for a moment. 
just play this to see so now we already got some really cool effect just that easy right just it's really simple to get the basic look that it's already looking very cool I put another color ramp for the distance so now we can have more control of it and you can just play around with this number to get the result that you like it's all just up to you it's more like a artistic choice and also this noise texture you can give it more detail or less detail now we will like to kind of like give it thickness but it will not look like only like a thickness it will be looking like a, a track to the target sphere we use an extrude mesh over here and turn off the individual so it might be something like this the whole thing is like a extrude out so what we want is use this multiply and add take the result to the scale of set and it be something looking like this but actually what we want is kind of like the invert of this so we use a color ramp and just invert that I set it to be something like this so it's only the edge will be extruded out so you might get something like this Maybe you can use a uh, multiply and add to give bigger, bigger result that you want. Now actually we can merge them, join geometry. So now you might see something like this, kind of like a two layer of the the sphere but uh, actually if you turn off this smooth it looks quite different so maybe we can change something to be more reasonable just don't give this number to be like too crazy so now you see here it's very different right with the smooth or without the smooth so actually what we are working with is like uh, without the smooth so we can turn this for a moment we can merge them so we merge by distance so now if we turn on the smooth it looks totally different so that's without the merge by distance that's with the merge by distance so now it looks kind of like the fluid, right? And it's also like a alien like. But something I might want to change is this part is separate. But uh, however, the some some part that is not affected by the extrude mesh, it will be totally on top of each other. So we can use this this add to give a total extrude so maybe 0 0.1 so the whole thing will be have some thickness when we merge that it could be even smaller just we just want to a little bit thickness depending on how you like and this merge can be also even smaller so it depends on what you like like this it's Maybe we check the face. We, we still need to flick the face. So let's flick the face first. If it's totally flat, totally um, without the thickness we give, it will be a little bit weird. If we consider the face orientation, it will be more correct like this, but it depends on the result. So either way, it's okay. It's up to you. Give a subdivision at the end. Subdivision surface and set to smooth. 
I think it's because of the smooth modifier. Whenever it's subdivide inside of the geometry, which is before the smooth, the the result will be different because it got more face and when you smooth that out it will be it will be calculate more precisely but more precisely sometimes it was it's not what we're looking for so you can put the subdivision service after the modifier so it's got smooth but also looking like uh, what kind of what we like now we got something looking like this looking quite cute now we want to make something more interact with this uh, noise we want to kind of like animate that what we want is use a vector math plug that in and use a position maybe set it to be multiply and add set all these to be one First, we can use this location. Try to just plug that in. So, this is one way you can animate that. Whenever this sphere is moving, the noise is kind of moving as well. Before we play around the, the vector of the noise, I think it's better that we make a material for this. That way we can see, actually see the noise. What we want is, we want this result to be out. So plug that out and we name that to be color. Okay, so also from outside, on the modifier section just name that to be color and we give it we give a material and then we go to the shader editor and take this attribute and, and type the name to be color and just plug that to the color ah but we forget to set the material so so now we actually see what noise is being applied and then just go back to the shader editor and use a color ramp So just tweak this to, to match the result most similar to the geometry. So it's basically looking something like this. This edge area will be most be effective by the noise. Alright, so now we can go back to see what we are actually doing with this vector so now you can see that by tweak by change the noise you can get different look so this is one way we can play around this and also we can make it like a fossil feel like a tornado that is turning so what we will want is vector rotate. So we use this vector rotate and plug that in between these two and set it to be Z because mostly we want to use the Z axis to be rotate. And just try to rotate that to C. So actually we are rotating the noise but what we want is not rotate the, the whole thing. It's um, by using some distance for one point. That point will be affect the least and to take another point and that point will be rotate the most. So the whole thing will like a 
tornado, right? So what we want to do is using this geometry proximity, this distance, you just plug that into the angle. Right away, you can see the effect. So use a math. To multiply that effect. Now you see this. So maybe you can take this number even higher. This uh, sphere subdivision. So now you got this like a force of field. And now you might want to tweak some value a little bit because the look is become very different. At this point, just play around with it. Too much variant that you can play around with it. And I think this effect, like any tiny little change, you can get a very different look. So it's a uh, very cool and very not easy to control because you can get lost by playing this for a very long time. I also set it to be multiply and add, so you can just by turn this add, it will be like rotating. It will not affect the scale, but the multiply it will affect the scale of this this turning look. So yeah, you can get something that is very beautiful, looks like this. So now let's go back to the material. So the material is quite self-explanatory because you can see the there's two color, black and white. So you just use that to be your material. I just do it most simple one just to show you guys how it works. Just set that to the emission the color and turn it to be all the way up. And what I want is the invert of that, so just make another one and re reset that into be invert. Right, and take, take off the light, and maybe I want it to be more powerful, just multiply. Make a bloom. So that's that. You can use it for anything. This color. So that's basically this effect looks like. Thank you. Bye bye.